Hi there, this video is an exam paper walkthrough of the EDUCAST GCSE Mathematics Foundation Tier Component 1 paper from Summer 2023. This paper is worth 120 marks in total and this is the first video of six. It will focus on questions 1 to 3 which account for 17 of these marks. EDUCAST Component 1 papers are non-calculator papers so a calculator should not be used. A little disclaimer, there may be more than one way to answer a question. The methods shown in this video are not the only way some mathematical skills can be applied. OK, let's get started. Question 1. Part A. Calculate each of the following. Part 1. 7000 divided by 10. If I'm dividing by a power of 10, these digits are going to move one place to the right for 10, two places to the right for 100, etc. So this is going to become 700. Part 2, 65 times 1000. So if I'm multiplying by powers of 10, the digits move to the left, the appropriate numbers of places. So this is going to become 65,000. Part 3. 9 subtract 14. So we're taking 14 away from 9. 9 is a smaller number, so we're going to go past 0 into the negatives. Okay, so 9 subtract 14 is negative 5. Part B, complete this sum. Something, add 121 equals 200. So if I do 200 subtract 121, it will tell me that missing value. So it should be 79. Part C. Complete each statement with a number from the box. So we need to use the numbers in this box here. Part 1. This number is a prime number. So a prime number can only divided by, be divided by 1 in itself because it only has two factors, 1 and itself. So any of these that are multiples of 2, so 6, 8, 10, 24 cannot be prime numbers. We've also got to think about any potential easy spots for multiples of 5, so 15 and 55. So we're choosing between 13 and 49. 49 is in the 7 times tables, 49 is a square number, 7 times 7, so the prime number must be 13. Part 2. This number is a multiple of 12. So anything smaller than 12 is not going to count in this instance because we want it to be a multiple so that's 12 and then multiples of 12 beyond that so it gets bigger 13 is not a multiple of 12 15 is not a multiple of 12 but if we think about our 12 times tables 24 is the second multiple of 12 so multiple is your times tables and then part three this number is a square number we mentioned that here 49 is a square number it's 7 times 7. Part D. Write 0 0.4 as a fraction in its simplest form. So currently we're a decimal. To write 0 0.4 as a fraction, I'm going to write it as 4 over 10 initially. We have one decimal place. It's in the tenths column. So that's 4 tenths. Now we need to make sure it's in our simplest form. Well, I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, so that becomes 2 fifths in its simplest form. Question 2a, part 1. Circle the best expression for the chance that it will snow in the UK in July. So we're looking at snow in July. Okay, we know that it can snow. So it's not impossible, but it's very unlikely it's going to snow in July because that's one of our summer months. So it would be unlikely, but not impossible because weather's unpredictable. Part 2. A dish contains equal numbers of green grapes and black grapes. Pedro takes one grape at random from the dish. Circle the best expression for the chance that Pedro takes a green grape. So there's equal numbers of green and equal numbers of black, so that's important. If there's an equal number of each, then there must be an even chance 
of picking out that a black or a green grape. Part B. One letter is chosen at random from the nine letter word Australia. On the probability scale below, mark with an arrow the probability that the letter chosen from the, world Austra the word Australia is T. So first of all, there's a nine letter word. So if we were writing it as a fraction, it would be out of nine. And then how many T's are there? Well, there's only one T, so it's one ninth. So let's have a look at this probability scale. We go from zero to one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equidistant spaces, nine equally spaced lines. So each one of them must be equal to one ninth. So we'd have one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths. This is one ninth. So we're going to pop our arrow on that first line. Part two, A, E, I, O, U are vowels. On the probability scale below, mark with an arrow the probability that the letter chosen from the word Australia is a vowel. So let's see how many vowels we've got. One, two, three, four, five. So five out of nine letters are vowels. Remember each of these is one ninth. So one, two, three, four, five. We're marking our arrow there. Question three. The diagram is drawn on a one centimetre square grid. It shows the location of some places in a town. Part A. Write down the coordinates of the shop. So this is the shop here and our coordinates, we deal with the X coordinate first, then we deal with the Y coordinate. So if we read down from where the shop is plotted, the X coordinate is negative 5. And then if we read across in a straight line, the Y coordinate is 3. There is a bus stop, B, halfway between the cafe and the pool. Mark the position of the bus stop on the diagram. So we're going between the cafe and the pool. And we're looking for that halfway point. So we're looking for the midpoint. Let's look at the horizontal distance. One, two, three, four, five, six horizontally. And then one, two vertically. So the midpoint will be half of that distance. So it will be three horizontally and one vertically. So this is our midpoint B, the bus stop. Part C, the scale of the diagram is one centimetre represents 50 metres. There is a straight path from the school to the pool. How long is the actual path? Give your answer in metres. So we're going from the school to the pool. Okay, this is a one centimetre grid. So we can count the distance from the school to the pool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight okay so it's eight centimeters on the diagram from the school to the pool every one centimeter represents 50 meters so if one centimeter represents 50 meters and we've got eight centimeters we need to multiply 50 by eight five times eight is 40 50 times eight is 400 so the actual path is 400 meters in real life.